Hi there, and welcome to Inside the Wooniverse, a podcast brought to you from the corner of Fringe and Maine. I'm your host, Colette Baron reed Welcome to another episode of our limited edition podcast series called I Talk to Dead People. Joining us today is one of the most highly respected psychic mediums that I know, John Holland. John is a spiritual teacher, author, and founder of My Soul Community, has starred in numerous TV shows and documentaries, and is the author of six books, four Oracle card decks, mobile apps, and much more. He spent the last 20 years continually training and honing his gifts, which have made him one of the most sought after professional mediums on the world stage. I've had the great pleasure of working with John often. Um, so I can tell you he is literally one of the best in the world. So welcome, John. Oh my God. Am I really in the universe with you? My yes, God. you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm honored. Hello, Colette. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Yes, I'm so excited because, you know, what we get to do today is that I get to introduce you to everybody and from when you began. I mean, you've got one of the best stories and I'm so excited to listen to you. So I want to go back in time together. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you you have wrote what your first book, I think it was called Born Knowing. Right. So in 2003 with Hay House, imagine. I remember. I know. <laughs> I know. I met you two years later. I remember right. that you were. You like took me under your wing. I was uh, like the new like kid in town. Bird. <laughs> like a little bird. Like a little birdie. <laughs> peck, peck, peck. Um, anyway, so uh, I want to go back to your childhood. I want to go back to the moments where you knew, like, ooh, I can see dead people, or I could, I could, I could see different things. I had mm -hmm. this experience. Let's go there. Okay. Um, well, I always start off uh, from New England, really. Uh, Irish, Italian, Catholic family, brought up Catholic. And I'm one of five kids. And I think, Colette, a lot of people who have this potential or this ability, you see it in your childhood. You really, really do. And I was always the different one in the family. I'm one of three boys and I have two sisters. And while my brothers were out playing baseball or football or uh, playing in the streets, stickball, whatever with the other kids, I was always indoors, either drawing, um, yeah. drawing, reading, reading was, I was a huge reader as a child, anything that had to do with philosophy, religion, magic, <laughs> spiritual subjects. Now we're talking like 10 years old now. So my, as yeah. much as my dad tried to push me outside with the, with the boys, I was more happy in my own little world. And that's when I knew I was a little different. I used to see people walking through my bedroom at night and someone, a lot of people say, Colette, weren't you frightened? I can't be frightened of something that was always there as a small child. I would see right. people walking through my room and I thought I was dreaming. So I knew things that I couldn't possibly <laughs> know when the phone was going to ring, who was going to surprise my parents with a visit. So it was always there. And like society right now, I was bullied. I was called freak, mm. weirdo, something's wrong with you. So I was not only, because you say, let's get personal, and I will. Not only was I the different one out of the family and the street, um, I was very skinny, chicken legs, a patch on my <laughs> eye, glasses, big ears. So I was quite a sight to look at and quite a sight to uh, to listen to. So it was always there, but it was... Uh, when you when you're bullied, you learn to hide things. So I mm -hmm. I didn't really tell too many people about it. I just hid it. Remember, I'm only a child, and the word psychic really wasn't around. Except I did have an aunt who was always yeah. my aunt Shirley, who's passed away. She was always into dreams, and she would uh, mm -hmm. she would actually win lottery numbers through her dreams. I don't have that ability, uh, yeah. but she would really win. And, but she would read dream books, and I was fascinated when I went into my grandmother's home where she lived. There was a sense of spirit in the room. There, mm -hmm. in that house there really really was and she had all these dreams books so that was my only connection to the other side and i don't know about you colette does anybody have this in your family colette my grandmother was always she knew things the word psychic my dad right my my mom my but my dad for real my dad would go yep. into a trance i mean it was yep. like my father was out in, yeah i mean i totally yeah. totally inherited this so I don't know if it's, maybe it is inherited, maybe it's in the genes or your soul blueprint, I, I'm not sure, but that's what it was like as a child. And still, I still studied everything I can that was out there. Um, and it's funny enough, my mom would wake me up at night. If there was any religious movies on, like the Ten Commandments, the Song of Bernadette, the Lady of Fatima, she always woke me up to watch these movies with her. Why? Right. See, so I knew she, she knew there was some type of connection. And my mom said once before she passed away, she said, you know, Johnny, Growing up, I loved all you kids, but there was something different about you, something. So mm -hmm. it was always there, Colette, even as a child. And I pushed it away right up until, uh, you know, until I was a young adult. 
but it was always there. Have you ever had a, uh, an experience? Well, I, I know the answer to this, but you had an experience where you literally, you know, it changed your life, something that happened that brought this to you in a way that you couldn't deny. Yeah. Well, uh, I remember, I know what you're talking about, the accident, but even as a kid, something, two things happened that I'll never forget. I was climbing a tree like a little boy, right? One time I was outside and it was two stories <laughs> high and I wanted to go on a warehouse, a tire warehouse's roof. You know how kids are, boys, there's no thinking. So I climbed this tree and it was two stories up and I went for the branch and it snapped and I fell all the way down. I swear I didn't hurt myself. I know kids bounce when they're young, but I had the branch in my hand and I just giggled and washed and walked away. I think I was carried down, Colette, mm. to the earth, almost as in slow motion. I don't remember falling. I was just on my butt holding the stick. And another time I was at a neighbor, I was running into a neighbor's doorway. We had three deckers then uh, where I lived. And there's an open door and a hallway with the stairs. And I was going up to see this uh, friend of mine named Diane. I had to be like 11. And I'm full speed as a kid. And I went into the hallway and I hit an invisible wall and it knocked <gasps> me back on my butt. And I went and I didn't know was somebody coming out, a spirit, was some was a guardian or a guide or a guardian angel stopping me from running in. But I reached out to make sure that there was nothing in that hallway doorway before I walked in. Two freaky things there. And then, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I hid the ability for many years. Mm -hmm. My teenage friends knew what I could do. And it was just like, John, do your thing that you do, whether it was prediction or tell them about someone. And then I was in an automobile accident, call it that, awoke mm -hmm. the abilities. It wasn't the accident that made it happen. The mm -hmm. accident, we all get wake up calls, everyone. Right. That I was living in Los Angeles. Just think about it. LA, young man, young life, going out, partying, in a relationship I, I was in way too long that I should have got out of it a long time ago, but it was a wake up call. And I think your soul gives you opportunities, dreams, yep. intuition. Uh, synchronistic events. I had a wake up call. And when I had that accident, I could have died. That's when I just looked up and I said to God, the universe, thank you. And when I got my life together, call it, we've all, I know you've had a traumatic experience. And after yep. that experience, we got our life together. And I think yep. we got aligned. And that's when everything started happening. The It came yep. in so strong. And I wanted to train why is this happening to me? Because I'm a big advocate of the mechanics of how this ability works. Which I love about you because I'm a completely untrained medium. As a matter of fact, when I had my TV show, you were the one that I called. I'm like, what do I do with them? There's too many of them. You go, you can park them, park put them in the parking lot. Park the link. <laughs> like, I'll never forget park that. Like, <laughs> you park the link. I'm like, ooh. So I actually learned a lot from you because I didn't know anything about the mechanics of it. So, um, so you started work as a psychic medium. And uh, did you have any... I don't know, issues around calling yourself that or owning it? Or was it after the accident, you just go full tilt? Well, when the accident happened, I studied even more psychic ability. Why is, and right. I had no problem being psychic. How do I shut it off? Because right. I, I wanted to know how was this happening? That's when I got into energy, aura, chakras, meditation, mm -hmm. breath. And this is in my early 30s. Um, so I... I didn't see people right away. I, I studied and studied. And then, of course, you'd love this. I picked up my first Oracle deck, my first, the white, uh, <laughs> the Aquarian deck. And I started right? reading the cards. Aquarian deck. Yeah. yeah. Love it. I, I had that deck. To, that was one of my first ones. Yeah. And I read the book, highlighted, and I started doing, and I still didn't see people. Then a friend uh, who owns an aromatherapy shop in LA said, why don't you do readings here? And I'm like, oh, God, no. No, 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 no. I don't. Uh, I nervous call it people's lives are in your hand what if i'm wrong what if i'm not doing it right slowly i started doing readings but i kept my day job all right for nine years before i went full time what was your started, day job I, it, what wasn't my day job i worked for <laughs> i worked for an aeronautics company i was a bartender i worked as a i worked in a temp office i was even the cadbury rabbit once for easter so and for the temp agency i swear where are the, you were I the was, cadbury rabbit it was the cadbury rabbit kids sat on my lap and they said john you're the only one that we could think of that would do this and i and i did it it was good money so I did it. <laughs> well, there's something you never heard before, but I was a Cadbury no. rabbit at a store, yeah, for a while. And um, that's when I started reading cards, and the cards were telling me things that weren't in the book, Colette. You know, they, right? They, uh, right? They not same. You know, yes, yeah. it's not psychic in the book. Tarot. Absolutely, and yes. that's how I came up with psychic tarot. But two years into doing tarot, uh, psychic work, because there's a difference, everyone. There's mediumship, yeah. and then there's psychic work, right? Very so, different. Exactly. When I look at Colette, 
I'm reading her energy, her aura, her past, her present, her potential future. Mediumship is different. I am yep. not connecting to Colette. She is the bridge, but I'm connecting to the other side. So mediums, yeah, psychics perceive, mediums receive. Every medium is psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. So Well, that I'm going to say something about that, too, because I, I 100% agree with you. Um, but I do think that the, the psychic is not just about perceiving because the, you, you still receive sure. information, yes. right? But I get it, what you're saying. You receive messages yes. from the other side. But I understand, and I agree with you 100%. There, they, it, is, it even comes in, it's a different channel. Like it's like a totally different channel you tune into on a radio. Exactly. Um, it feels different. You're looking at a completely different uh, yep. dimension when you work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of students, they say, how do we know the difference? After a while, Colette, you know, you know. there's a feeling to it. There's, it's, it's totally yeah. different. Two years into reading the cards, uh, doing readings on the weekends or, or evenings, whenever, and I did it, spirit, people started on the other side, started showing up. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. And I, I always ask my students, what do you think happened? Think about it. Two years, I'm reading, I'm tuning, I'm tuning, my, yeah. my art, bigger, bigger. Those on the, they say in mediumship, you raise your energy, those on the Thank other you. side lower theirs. So the potential was there, but my vibe wasn't high enough to connect. So two years, and so once again, everyone for Colette, I said, all right, so wait a minute, why is this happening? Why is this uh -huh. happening? The very first reading was a woman I was reading mm -hmm. for, she came to see me about her artwork where she's going with school, what she wants to do, and that was great. And then all of a sudden, in my mind's eye, I saw a, an elderly woman right beside her. And I'm looking at her, and I'm looking at my client, I'm looking at the old woman. Now remember, it's not like the movies, everyone, all right? Right, I yeah, saw, you don't you see say, them. <laughs> right, it's kind of ob it's subjective. And I said, Mari, there's a woman, elderly woman right beside you. Her clothes don't match at all. Don't ask me why I noticed that. And she's showing me a diamond, you know, just pointing to a diamond. So at that point, Mari, my client, she screamed and got up. <laughs> I screamed because she was screaming. She <laughs> hugged me and I hugged her. And I said, Mari, what was that? Because Colette, it was different. She said, John, my great aunt Ada, who helped raise me, was colorblind. That's why her clothes never matched. And the diamond I'm wearing right now, I inherited from her. So that was the very first time. And I said, oh, great. So people on the other side are showing up and it kept happening. And once again, Colette, I didn't just call myself a medium. Why is this happening to me? Uh -huh. How, why is Uncle Joe or people's mom and dad or kids showing up in their reading? That's when synchronistic events led me to England to study for over two and a half years in England, uh, evidential mediumship. It was very synchronistic how everything, once I accident, I got my life together, everything lined up and I just followed the signs. I think about that too, you know, um, I have, first of all, I had no idea that you were going to work in a aromatherapy shop because that's where I started when I, and I actually had the Sick. same experience with somebody screaming and then I screamed. And, and even until I met you, which was years, it took me 20 years before I would even say the word medium, because I was still like, I don't understand how this is working. Had I gone and gotten trained, had right. I gone like you do over to England, I would have had a different story to tell. But because I was like, how is this possible? I, that's maybe right. I'm just really good at perceiving this information and I just know. So yeah. I was always like curious about that. So I'm, I'm, I like that, that your story includes, you know, that you went and trained and the mechanics became, and therefore you could relax into it more. Well, yeah. And I wanted to know, remember I'm from, I'm a, I'm a kid from the streets and I'm not going to read someone and say, you, oh, your grandmother's hair and there's a butterfly on her head. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, I, it's, I wanted evidence. I wanted to make sure yep. because I'm tough with that. Right. So, um, yep. and you said, you asked me, what did I have a problem calling myself psychic? Not really, but I was, I was careful of skeptics. You know, because yeah. the jokes and, oh, yeah, you're, you're a psychic. What's my name? Or uh, people still oh. give me their palm when they, you I know. I know, they, they get... still ask me for lottery yeah, numbers. Yeah, so I, did, I had no problem <laughs> calling myself a psychic, but it was, uh, it yeah. was, uh, it, but think about it, call it, where was I? Yeah. Los Angeles, California. Right. Where, it was, where the woo-woo was still happening well, even back then, so. Yeah. yeah. But I had no problem with it. So being, being, I had to, I had to let go of the story of my childhood of being called freaking weirdo and just mm -hmm. did it. And that's maybe that's why I trained because I wanted to be good at what I do at what, you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to be good at it. 
What are some of the most uh, outrageous stories from uh, over the years when you've, because I know you have tons because I know a lot of them, but I'd love you to share some of them with the audience because I think people would be find it fascinating. Well, a lot of people think that I do this 24 seven. When you're trained to do this, you, you, you shut it <laughs> you off. You have to turn off, yeah. You shut it off. There, there were incidences when I was living in England and I uh, there was a friend, uh, a colleague of Simon's, uh, the guy I was living with, he, he had a colleague and I just turned to her and I said, did your mother have a throat issue with polyps on her larynx? And she was like, yes. So things like that would happen, but I don't do that. I teach my students, don't walk up right. to everybody no, and do that. No, 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 I agree. Boundaries are crucial. Right, because Colette, you shut down too. And if you're, oh, yeah. if you're doing it 24 seven, if for the people who say, or the students, I can't shut it off or they're coming to me or I'm getting stuff, you're untrained. You, you should be able yeah. to, in no disrespect, but you should be able to turn it on and turn it off. But there's a lot of touching stories, call it not so much Tell where me. Uh, there Tell was me. Um, the 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 very first one that I wrote in Born Knowing was a, w a woman came to see me. I was living in L.A. and I decided to move back east. My mom was getting sick uh, with lung issues and I decided to move back. I'm not really wanting to move back and I was in the midst of moving. I get this call from a woman from San Francisco and I'm talking to her. This is when we picked up the phone, Colette, right? Right, you know? right. Okay, <laughs> so I picked up the phone and she's talking to me and I said, look, I'm about to move in, in three days. And then it happened. I said, you lost a child, didn't you? And I said, listen, if you can get down here tomorrow, I have time. She flew from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Wow. And she sat with me and um, I started reading for her. Grandparents started coming in and then... As I'm talking to her, the grandparents, myself doing mediumship, I, I kept hearing a, a, a sound and it went like this. It was like this tapping noise, but there was a rhythm to it. And I said, excuse me, what is the tapping I'm hearing? And she goes, oh my God, keep going, keep going. And so I'm talking, I'm doing the reading and I kept hearing it again. And I went, okay, excuse me, what is the tapping, please? We started linking, I started linking with her daughter. Her daughter, Jennifer, when she was five years old, went in for a surgery and it went wrong and she passed away. Mm. But before she passed away, she remember, uh, for the older audience, uh, remember clogs? With the yes, remember the clogs, the clogs, yes. clogs. <laughs> not 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 not, um, not the rubber ones, but literally right. wooden clogs. That wooden they, clogs. They, that uh, the girls used to wear. So she had a pair uh, that were too big for her and they were called her clickety clack shoes. So oh. when Melinda, the mother, went to go visit her sister who worked at a hospital also, linoleum floors, Jennifer would wear those shoes and what would she do? Along the floor. Skip, skip along the floor. And they buried her in those shoes, Colette. Oh my God. They buried her in those click clack shoes and then the reading ended with, I said, did you send up a balloon? I said, one balloon to her? And she says, oh my God. She says, every year on her anniversary, her picture's on the balloon. This is when you could send up balloons, right? Before it right. was dangerous yeah. because of the ocean. She, they sent up a balloon and all of her kids and friends and family would tie a little note on there to her oh, and then yeah. send them up to her. And, and I said, wow, that's special. So it was that was one of the most special ones. And then kind of a sad reading, but still the mother was comforted. So I lived near Venice Beach. So I go to the beach. It's like six o'clock at night. The sun is going down and nobody's at the beach. And I'm sitting there just thinking about leaving LA, kind of sad, the reading I just had. And what do I see washing ashore? A one red balloon. And I said, oh my God, if I go to that, <laughs> if I go pick up that <laughs> balloon and I see that kid's face on that balloon, I am going to absolutely freaking freak out. So I, and it wasn't, but what are the right, chances but still. of still? It was almost a, like, I looked at it as like a thank you from Jennifer yeah. because nobody's on the beach. I just did the reading. I ended with the balloon and one watches ashore where I was sitting. So things like that. And it happens over and over. And, and there's a, uh, and just one more quick one. This is very You don't touching. have to be quick. <laughs> you okay. don't have to be quick. Good, I love that. In the in the Wooniverse, it's in your own time, right? So, That's right. And we like hearing these stories in the Wooniverse. That's why we're here. <laughs> it's you know, Cola, you've done this, and as much as we love what we do, there have been times in our life where can I keep doing this? Yeah, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, it's 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 it can be exhausting if you don't monitor, balance the physical and the spiritual. I was yeah. I was really tired. I was doing it a lot, working my day job, doing it when I can, letting clients dictate when I could see them. I didn't set a schedule. Yep. There was a woman who came to see me, and. It was, it's always the people that lost children, Colette, that bring mm. me back to doing this work. 
So this woman comes to see me and clairvoyantly in my mind's eye, again, I see an empty wheelchair roll in front of me. And I went and I'm looking at it and I said, you lost a son. I said, he's telling me, look, Ma, no more wheels. And she started crying. And she said, please, please, he said, please tell my mom I am running the bases, B-A-S-E-S. And I went, okay. I said, would you understand that? He was a handicapped child, physically challenged. He had spina bifida. He was in a wheelchair Mm -hmm. from the time he was born, right? So he's on a bus and he, the bus driver hit the gas a little too fast and the kid's body, I don't want to get too graphical, but it's, it's, his neck was impacted by his head going back and he passed away. Uh, because the the bus driver just went a little too fast when he hit the brake or the gas. Uh, so yeah. when this kid, his whole life, this little boy, he had to be about, I don't know, I think he was like 10 or 11. So remember, no more wheels. He's not in the wheelchair anymore. No more and he said, wheel. tell right, him to run right. the bases. Outside his bedroom window across the street was a baseball field. He oh. would look out that window at the boys playing baseball, knowing he'll never be able to run the bases or get to play. Well, it's emotional, right? Yeah, yeah. The wheelchair comes in and says, no more, no, more, no more wheels, Ma. Let my mom know I'm running the bases. So is there baseball in heaven? I guess there is because he was running the bases and the kid was free of that body. Very touching. Things like, we've done thousands of readings, Colette, but there's some that stay with our heart, you know, and, that, mm-hmm. and that's one of them. There's so many. So have I had freaky ones? Yes. I'm, you know, it happens all the time. Um, and, you, have you, you know, had a funny one? Well, a really funny one? Um, well... How much can I say here on the Wooniverse? You can um, say anything. You can swear well, on the Wooniverse. Well, everyone, that. now for the people who are thinking, yes, <laughs> being a medium and, and an intuitive, it, it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual aspect, all right? So yeah, I'm going to tell you something. It could be hilarious some, too. I'm going to tell can. you something that I've really never said publicly or on oh, air, all right? So here's one. So this woman comes <laughs> to see me. Remember, everyone, when they go to the other side, they don't turn into these exalted beings. They're the same people. It, but, you yep. know, if they, if they were a piece of work here, they see what they've done here. But um, I could tell I was linking with her husband. He had the most, the biggest sense of humor. And I said, would you want <laughs> Mark will like this too. I said, wait a minute. Why is he, would you want to, st- now I'm getting something in my mind's eye. And it's, I teach people call it impression versus expression. How am I going to say right. this? So I said, why is he saying one hung low? What? One <laughs> hung low. And I said, and she started laughing her ass off. And I said, would you understand why she said, now call it, I don't know if you know what that expression is, but she said one hung low. And I said, why is he talking about one hung low? She said, because that's all he had. He had testicle cancer. <laughs> and <laughs> so that was hysterical. It's like, I said, is he really coming? She said he would say it all the time, John. So as much as you're saying to the wife, you know he's al- you know he still exists. Yeah, you, know you were he like continues. wanting to say, oh, he loves you. But uh, don't you think though that the people won't recognize the other person without the humor? Like that's what I found. Like exactly. Like they come through. Was for me, I get the body ex-alcoholics, the drug addicts exactly. like that, you know, with the wild personalities that'll come through and they'll say stuff that is so outrageous and I have to tell this to the person. That's right. But they were like, that's for sure my dad. That is 100%. He would say that, you know, and I remember like, so I felt, even though he also felt like an evolved being. So it was like, I'm going to show you who I was and this is what I would say. But I also now want to say this is what I've learned. So right. here's what I want to impart to yeah. you. So, yeah. So when like, we do mediumship, everyone, you have to realize bringing through the personality of someone where you're twitching like them. Or yeah. the other day I did a demonstration. I kept moving my mouth to the side. He said he had a cigarette in the side of his mouth. She goes, no, it was a wow. match, a stitch, stick match. Stick when you bring through the personality, it's mm-hmm. great evidence. But I want you to know if somebody has someone that wasn't really nice to them, their personality was, was a, uh, a difficult person. Mm-hmm. If I somebody say somebody had a mom that was difficult, that yep. personality is going to come through for them. Because if I said to someone, what a calm, peaceful, gentle soul your mother is, they'd be like, that's not my mother. That's they right. Show, that's right? right. They'll have to show. Yes, but I 100%. want you to know, everyone, they're not like that. It's just for identification purposes. Exactly. Only. It's not like right. they went on to the other side and they're still they're still nasty. Exactly. It's like they, but they show you. That's how I've experienced it, too. They show that's you right. who they are 
to get the attention of the person to show the evidence. This is who I was. This is my personality. And That's then right. you pr you process. Exactly. Um, so let me ask you a question. So what are some of the common misconceptions uh, that people have around mediumship? Um, or, you know, the work that we do. What, what are some of the common misconceptions? Um, well, First of all, too, we don't call the dead. It's not one eight hundred dial your dad, you know, or uh, <laughs> tell your dad. It doesn't work that way. And uh, I've never had, I've never had someone say, "Can you get my mother?" Now, remember, call it on the radio show. We used to do it for speed. Yeah. Like, who do you want to connect with? Sometimes they would get that person, or sometimes they they didn't. Um, yeah. We can't call them. Um, another one is it's not a cure for for. Uh, mm -hmm. or re to replace bereavement or grief counseling. Right, it's, it can very help, important. Right, mm -hmm. it can help, right? We can't, we can help t a little with it. Um, and another one is, um, I don't know about you, Colette, I see a lot of students here. I've never had an entity attach myself to me or, and I've never seen a haunting. Um, and no. I'm, in my book, Bridging Two Realms, I said, in my experience, because I didn't want everyone right. coming at me, in my experience, I've never seen anybody stuck. Now, people will come at you and say there are rescue mediums, of course they're stuck, and I've never experienced right. that. Right, you right? personally, same. I, but I have had a, a physical mediumship experience that completely freaked me out on stage at a Hay House event when Brian Weiss was in the audience, and he had to explain to me what just happened when somebody actually went into me. Were you choking? To, yeah, remember that one when so I was. How could choking? I forget it? I'm, of course, right? I was watching Colette Barron Reed oh, demonstrate. Right? Yes, you had to leave the stage. <laughs> I had to get off the stage, get a puffer. Somebody had to come and give me a puffer. And when I got up there, she then she said, "My father was a medium too. He would totally want to upstage you," and that's exactly him. And I was like, "I will never have that happen again, though." I'll be honest. Like I, I that's a boundary that I have. I'm yeah. like, never again will I ever do physical mediumship in my life. Thank you. Yep. So has have you ever had that physical sensation that became the other person? It does happen with coughing sometimes. Um, I have a, because I'm a, you know, you're just like Italian. me. We're very demonstrative with uh. our hands and our body. Yeah. So what happened was is that spirit, that soul got so close to you. Right? right, that oh. you you felt it, and students sometimes people get emotional, or they're like, I can feel their pain. Ask them to step back; they can yeah. step back too, also. But you know, that was suddenly with you. Um, I've, <laughs> and uh, I didn't have any any way to know what to do. I was I'm, like, Oh, get out of here! Get out! 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 out. <laughs> Right, exactly. I have an agreement with the other side. You could, with the time that I'm with you, you can use me any way you want, physically, mentally, spiritually. I have been known. Uh, one time, I started doing an Irish jig on dance, and I said, "Do you want to tell me why your father's making me do this? Because he taught Irish step dancing." So, do you see what I mean? So, yeah. I will act yeah. it out. I will start acting like that person. So, it's I, but I it's find... more. But isn't it more that way? What you're talking about, more demonstrative. Like I'm doing this. Does that make sense? That as opposed to they're inside you doing right that. that's never they very never, different and, and are they inside or are they just got so close to you colette so yeah you think about that did they get really that close where you took on their physical and it's not Could, like yeah. a possession everyone here's oh, here i use no. my hand like they can see this is <laughs> colette imagine like just a, another spirit blending with colette so yeah. close that she is too close yes exactly too close but now you're too aware close. of it and it won't happen again no, I, I learned the hard way. I, I cut my teeth through experience. And uh, and then I just was like, finally, I'm just like, okay. And I know what I can turn on and turn off. And I know what my boundaries are. Like, well, I am not interested in actually seeing any right. physical. Yeah. Because I know some mediums see, see, they see the, right. the person who's crossed over. They see yeah. the, I'm like, I'm not interested. How I can listen. <laughs> yeah, you can listen. Yeah, clear audience. How about this? I, there have been times, everyone, you've got an audience of two, 3,000 people like we had, call it, with Hay House, right? Or right. more. Sometimes Especially more. Especially when, yep. when you work with Sylvia, right? I mean, come right. on. You know, thousands and thousands of people. And that, I mean, uh, we're taught if you're not feeling the, that well, you shouldn't do it. But when you've got right. 3,000 people and you can you still walk and you can still talk and you can <laughs> still have... I had pneumonia and did exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> but the amazing thing is when you're doing it, all your ailments... Go yes, away. That's right. And the minute you stop, it's yeah. back. You could have laryngitis and then your voice is back. Now, is that spirit influence, the energy, or is it endorphins? Yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. A both. I, uh -huh. I had diverticulitis attack in Houston with Sylvia in front of an audience, and I had to go out there. Um, 
but it went away and then it came back. So I, I, I find the work fascinating at the same time, how this all happens. Yeah, because it, it really is interesting because we are asking to be a clear channel. So what we are experiencing is not like I lose me and I actually pray that way too. I say, you know, uh, grant me, well, I'll go, first I'll go, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot, I change, cannot change, courage to change the things I can, wisdom to know the difference, thy will be done through me. That's right. Relieve me of the bondage of self so that I may do thy will. Show me yeah. you know, how to be a clear channel for divine clairvoyance or divine mediumship. So I'll, either or. And it would be like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not important here. So yeah, it feels like, oh, you feel completely different. That's why I feel like somebody shoots me up with B12 because I do this twice a month in my <laughs> membership site. I do right. 90 minutes of readings like two times a month. And I'm like, oh my God, that's medicine for me. Just yeah. going out there and doing it. Well, they teach us in England too, when I was in England, less of me, more of spirit. Yeah, less of less me. of me, more of spirit. Yep, just exactly what you said. Yep. yep, yeah, it's getting our own way. We have to put everything aside, everyone. Our emotions, who we are. If we just had a uh, an ex uh, not a great experience with someone, because it's a life of service. Step. Right, it really yep. is. Now, do you have any specific rituals that you do, uh, pre or post uh, your your work? Yep. Before I get on stage or before I see a reading? Both. Well, yeah. I was raised Catholic and, you know, you uh, have been doing the serenity prayer. Um, I think that's brilliant. I literally get on my knee, do the crucifix over me. Okay. You know, do, you know, I bless myself. Yeah. And then I say the Our Father. I call it in my mediumship training, like the turn on switch, meaning by you saying serenity and less of you, more of spirit in the serenity prayer that you do. I look at it this way. We're letting them know I'm ready for you. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I am open. The door is open. You know, you can step forward now. So that is my ritual where I, I'll try to get calm. I don't have to light an incense or a no. candle or start chanting Om. It's, we've been doing it long enough to say, yeah. I just get on my knee, do the Our Father, and then I get up. And it's weird when I don't do it, it seems like, um, I mean, it's I still it. work. It's just, it is such a ritual. A spiritual practice that uh, it's something that I, I I'll always do call it no matter what it's interesting that you get on one knee so I find the supplicant prayer the contemplative supplicant prayer on my knees like just saying I surrender yeah. that for me is important too is be like before I go out and do even when I show up for spirit jam you know whenever you know we do a, an event like I'm always on my knees that day in the morning mm -hmm. I'm on my knees saying like use me use through me what's the highest good and then I just trust that it's the highest good even if I'm like I don't it, I could be wrong but it's my interpretation as opposed to the actual usually I say and I believe and you tell me if you feel that way too sure. that the information is always 100% correct it's just sometimes our interpretation of it that's not right exactamundo yes <laughs> yeah we can misinterpret what we're getting and can I tell you another story yeah that people, okay so the end of bridging to realm I'm kind of giving it away um, but there was a time with Brian Weiss um, remember I'm always fascinated by this work because I always look at it if something comes through I don't let say look what I got look what I got mm, mm, mm. it's coming through me it's coming from them so I will right. give them the credit on the other side yeah. there was a time when um uh, you know Bob and Melissa right sure okay. so I knew Bob's birthday was coming this is a number of years ago and I was about to do an event with Brian Weiss at the at, in Boston for 1200 people it was sold out and it was like a few days away but I'm driving down the street and I saw the Hallmark store and in my head I said oh, I gotta get Bob a birthday card so as soon as I said that I heard this in my head <laughs> buy a Snoopy buy a Snoopy and I went now I didn't say, who are you? <laughs> why, why should I buy it? I'm thinking it's a kid in my mind. And, <laughs> but I've trusted if something comes to me out of the blue that has nothing to do with call it anything that I'm doing. Right. So I went into the Hallmark store and I said, do you have any Snoopies? You know, and she showed me one that shakes like it was having a uh, seizure. <laughs> I'm like, no, not those. I said, don't you have a little plush Snoopy? Every store has them, right? You right. Know, so uh, especially Hallmark stores. So I took one of those and i put a big red bow on it i didn't know if this was going to be given away to a child or from right. a child but i knew brian weiss's thing was happening so i trusted it i gave yep. it to my assistant and i said look at put this behind the podium right if it if it if if during the, the afternoon that right. it comes through in a message then it'll happen but i am not going to walk on stage with the who's is this 
<laughs> or say this, does anyone, can anybody, can you say to 1,200 people, can anybody relate to the character or the cartoon Peanuts or Snoopy? Well, everybody well, every, does. We exactly. All... <laughs> I have a beagle. My, aunt, my, my mother's Lucy. My dad called me Peanuts. It had to come through the reading. So one of the very last readings that I'm doing I went to the side, to the right side here, and I said, someone over here, I have a mother who's coming through saying you, it's, who couldn't make the funeral, and I pointed right to the row, right? Because you can't do 1,200. Right, 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 right. So I went, and I said, who here understands you didn't make it to the mom's funeral? Um, she passed away like this, and a woman raised her hand, and she said, he did, which is her husband. And right. so the message started coming through from the mother, and in my head, I heard, this is where the Snoopy goes. Oh. So... Now remember, twelve hundred people. You're taking. You've got to yeah. so trust in yes. your work and in spirit. I walk behind the podium. Now my assistant put a big red bow on the collar of it, and I put it behind my back, and I said, "Okay, sir, would you understand?" Oh, then his dad came through, right? Right. And then I'm linking with the dad then, and I said, "Can you tell me why?" Your dad made me buy a Snoopy, and I held it out to the audience, and. He, he was taken back. The wife was taken back. And I said, can you please explain this? Why? I said, I had to buy it. Your father gets off. And get, okay. <laughs> and he told me that Charles Schultz, he loved hockey. Now, a lot of people don't know this. You can look it up. If you look where Charles Schultz's office was, he had a hockey rink built outside his office outside. And all the retired hockey players, he would invite to start their own league just to play as older men. His father was on Team Snoopy, and Charles Schultz would always say, come join my team. Come join my team. Well, it, so it was Team Snoopy. So what? Team Snoopy. So what evidence is that, right? So the whole audience <laughs> was like, oh. And so I was like, I have to play it cool. Like, yeah, this is like nothing. But how fast? How <laughs> I never fast play it cool. I'm always just as freaked out as everybody else. I was freaked I mean... out. I, come on. I mean, if I ever doubted it, I mean... Out of all the people, I bring the Snoopy. His father played hockey with Charles Schultz in another state, and you could everyone could look it up. Right. Charles Stude hockey rink Charles right outside hockey. his office. Oh my Fascinating. god! Fascinating. How do you doubt that? How does a skeptic say, yeah. "Well, come on"? Oh, I know. Now, have uh, tell me a couple of stories because we're you and I are going to be working on a book called Ghost Whiskers mm -hmm. because this is both of our experiences with animals, and we're both That's big right. animal activists. So, tell me about any any like amazing reading that you did where the animal has come through. Um, well, a lot of people don't know this, but let me share something that happened <laughs> when I watched Colette do this uh. her, when her mediumship started unfolding. That's the word, unfolding. Unfolding. So mm -hmm. she's on stage, and I know it's about <laughs> me, but I'm going to turn it around because I have to tell about you because I was fascinated. <laughs> I love watching people work on stage. It's not competition. There's enough no. dead people for everybody. Everybody, there's enough dead Get people. Get the training, right? So Colette is there, and she says, I have a mouse here with three legs, and it was in her hair, and she <laughs> said, and she said, I have a mouse here. Now, Colette, the spirit would come through with the animal, lead them to the, I, lead them to the person. And then Colette would do her, her reading, whether it was person's card or reading. Yeah. Exactly. So I have a three-legged dog here, and you would understand, no, a three-legged mouse here. And or it was said, a rat. It was a rat. Right. And it, three yeah. legs now. And she said, it would sit on the shoulder and hide in your hair. And the girl raises her hair now. I don't know about you, but in my mind, if I was to get something like that, I'd be like this. Was, please, somebody raise their hand on that one. <laughs> right, please. Who's going to raise their hand? Sure enough, a woman raises her hand. She had a pet rat yeah. that had three legs and would always wind itself in her hair to keep warm or that's where she yep. had it. Right? So come on. I mean, yeah. so that animal came through, but I've had three-legged dogs come through. I've had, I think they do go to the other side. Now, I'm not an animal communicator. I think no, we neither could am I. I think we could call it if we just if we yeah. if we train that you know and I'll, we're already connecting, but um, I know I'm doing it at the dog park now for people. Where I'm connecting with the dog that's alive, talking to them, and it's really bizarre. But um, it's, it's our work <laughs> and they changes. come in at the same. Do you not notice too sometimes that the living animal sounds exactly like the animal who's crossed? So like for me, when I've tuned into animals that have crossed over, they they give the litany of what elements they had when you know which stitches were you know when they had to get this popped and their their hip displays their personality it, and the personality and how stupid their friend the dog was or whatever like they would be like oh my god that one like opinions and whatever it was like a person yeah. but then 
but but only limited, right? There was a limitation, yeah. but they always came through to point to the guardian, right? Yeah. To say, I want to talk, talk to my mom. Yeah. Like the, she needs to talk about what happened when I died or something, right? So it was always really interesting. Mm -hmm. And there's more than just dogs and cats, everyone. Like oh, yeah. the rat. Um, there was one time <laughs> um, I looked out <laughs> I at the audience. Do, do you remember Britney Spears back in the day? She had that boa constrictor around her. Yes. You know, in the in the on the album cover. So I went to a woman and oh, no, it was a uh, gentleman. And I said, "Would you now a boa constrictor now?" All right. So I said, "Would you understand? You had a boa constrictor because in my mind, my symbol." Because I right. didn't have a peripheral reference to a boa <clears throat> constrictor. Was I saw Britney Spears, and he goes, "Absolutely, <laughs> that pet lived for a long, long time." And um, a funny time was is uh, I'm 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 in Massachusetts with uh, Lauren Rainbow, Karen Polino, and a, another healer, and we're doing a show, <laughs> and I'm on stage, and I felt this furry thing in my hand. Right. I didn't see it. I all I knew, and I'm stroking this thing. I'm like, "Is this a cat?" What is this? <laughs> what is I'm stroking this? something spirit, right? And it's like there's a long thing. Is it a squirrel? What is this? And it was like crawling up near my neck. It was a ferret, right? Right. And and the 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 woman said, Oh my God. She said, I had a pet ferret. Or no, her parents had a pet, her mother had a pet ferret, and the ferret would always sleep with the mother in the bed with the husband. The husband couldn't stand that the ferret was in the bed with the wife and him. <laughs> uh -huh. and, but what better to come through was the damn ferret, right? So, yeah. everyone's, so but uh, uh, everyone who's listening, your animal does go over. They are waiting for you, whether it's yeah. a mouse, a ferret, a dog, an animal, a snake. They all go to the other side. Thank God, right? Because some people and think I, that animals don't have souls. Look into uh, those eyes. You know they do. And let's use that as a great segue to talk sure. about why you moved into teaching about the soul, because that's really, you know, you wrote a whole book called The Power of the Soul and a lot of your work, although you train mediums and do, you know, mediumship is a, is a practical thing that you do. But, right. you know, I know that you, you moved into that study of consciousness and the soul. So let's chat a little bit about that sure. next. Sure. Yeah. Well, I wrote, believe it or not, I wrote B Power of the Soul, Inside Wisdom for an Outside World in 2007. Right now, look how much. Um, and when I look at the pow power of the soul, and you look at your writing, you've done this. And you're like, who wrote this? I right? know, I totally did. That. And like, this is, <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be. I don't want to use the word channeled per se, but inspiration. Um, so there's a lot of stuff now. Call it with soul, right? It's popular yeah. now. The word, right? So about about three and a half years ago, as much as I love this work, mm -hmm. I, as much as I love this work. Um, same thing with you, I believe, Colette, is I yeah. love doing mediumship, but something was missing. I needed something more. My soul was yearning. I'll always enjoy doing mediumship, but I, I needed something to fill my soul again. And so mm -hmm. I didn't have, even though we're psychic, everyone, we're intuitives, I didn't know where to go. I mm -hmm. just, um, I was a little lost, to be honest with you. And, you know, people say, Colette, too, where do you want to go with your mediumship? Well, where do you go with it? More study. Where do you like go? A, it's like... Exa <laughs> A like a plumber he's a plumber you know he right could, a plumber's a plumber and i don't mean to compare the two of them but it's you can only go so far um right. I've, and i'll always train i mean there's always new stuff trance or inspiration whatever but so i just sometimes you have to live into the answer and someone someone might say well why don't you call ed she could give you some guidance i needed to find this on my own uh there was like an not an emptiness but for about a year and a half I just, I knew just because something doesn't happen, everyone, so they were working on things in the right. background. And that's when I started getting in more into the power of the soul, your soul purpose, your soul gifts, um, how your soul has a blueprint. And slowly, right. little by little, I went back to power of the soul. And I guess it was time, Colette. That's when I started yeah. my soul community. It's based on helping people uh, to honor and to know that they, you are a soul that comes with the body not a body that comes with the soul. With the your soul. soul's been trying to get your attention. Call it, you know your soul has been trying to get your attention your whole life doing this work, but no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do no, that. No, I said I didn't want to do that for ages. There, but see how like, it I don't keeps really happening? Do this. I'm really a singer. Come, right? Don't come back next year. Oh, oh my God. I, I, I had so much resistance. I had such a huge chip on my shoulder about this. That's right. Cause but, call it a major singer with EMI Records and Reed Tracy, the president of Hay House, said to me, um, I love I love saying these things. They uh, he says to me, "We have a singing medium coming in, named Colette Baron Reed." And I went, "A singing medium? So she sings <laughs> she the messages." Sing her 
not a medium who sings, but a singing medium. And I'm, and I'm like, what, I have your father coming through? I mean, you know, I just, <laughs> but he should have told me she's a, she's a recording artist. All he had to say, but she's a singing medium. So I walked away like, okay, well, we'll see what that's all about. And it comes you and Mark. So, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. That's hilarious. But I, and so let's talk about that soul's blueprint, because I think that everybody's going to want to really get that. Tell me if you agree with me. Sure. Um, and I'd love to hear your take on this. So mm-hmm. I think... Uh, I believe that you can actually see indicators. If you look at a really good astrology chart, for example, you get a blueprint, but you know, and the blueprint is saying in this lifetime, here are some of the evolutionary aspects that you'll be invited to experience, but there's no guarantee that the the highest level of that is going to be what that's part of free will. So um, what I question I'd like to impart to you is, Given that, you know, we know we all come in with a blueprint, Mm -hmm. um, what is the relationship between free will, the ego, and the soul? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Think about it. I believe that you come in with a blueprint. It's going from point A to point B. Right. Now, some people, they know people as a kid or a teenager. They're like, you know what? I want to be a electrical engineer at 13. And they go right there. Right most of us meander off the path, (laughs) off Mm. the path. Now, psychic ability, magic, spirit, it was there. There's the blueprint as a child, right? Right. But I pushed it away. I pushed it away, but it kept coming back. It kept Mm trying, you know, even growing up. But your soul is trying to get your attention all the time, right? It really, really is. We ignore it. We ignore it. We push it away. or We don't even know it's happening. I kept mm-hmm. getting these signs about going back to intuitive work or studying more of this, but I was mm-hmm. too busy in LA in the material ego world, right. you know, about where I was living and then partying and, you know, going out here until I had that wake up call, which put me back on the track. And people will blame other people, Colette, right? right. Mm-hmm. By saying, if it wasn't for them, I'd be doing this. No, everyone. Hundred percent. Exactly, Colette. You have the choice. Like right now, my work is changing. I'm getting into energy. I want to do energy yeah. healing more on animals. Um, I'm studying the animal system of the body where their energy centers are. There. It, so I didn't see somebody do it and then go for it. Right. It's being. It's coming to me, or it's actually right. it's emerging from me, Colette. You know what I mean? Yes. It's emerging yes. from me. So I'm following the blueprint. Of doing that it, it's it's my choice i could easily say i have to do readings i've got to do this webinar i've got the community i got to do worksheets that's me saying i'm too busy if yeah that's yeah what, yeah you, you have to you you ha, it's up to you so try not to blame every, uh, somebody else everyone it's your free will it's your choice if you're going to go back on that path some people never get back to a collect and then they'll do it all over again when they come back i feel Okay, so this is really interesting. So let's let's now go into something broader. So we, we talk about the individual soul blueprint. So do you also believe that there is a cultural blueprint? Because everything is evolving and in motion, right? So because, you know, say for example, like my great, my great, great grandmother, great, great, I think it's great, was from Mongolia, right? So that was mm-hmm. like, she came from Western Mongolia to sure. Serbia, of all things, like in my, my, my family were horse traders there that I have that, therefore I have that ancestry. But sure. you know, this was, she didn't, I don't think she would have free, had a free will choice about that. She was a teenager. Mm-hmm. She was kind of traded, I think. Right. Then I have my grandfather who was killed in the Holocaust. So there's, it's like, that was not a free will choice, right? So do you think that we become subject to the greater blueprint and that's part of our destiny. Absolutely. I think someone, Mm -hmm. and I think not just society, I think uh, what's going on, I think other people's blueprints can interfere with yours, overlap yours. You see what I mean? So whether it's a person or a country. Yeah. So that gentleman who had, uh, I mean, your grandfather in the Holocaust, um, Mm -hmm. that's, you know, and it's, I love how you said, do you think there's a uh, a group, uh, so in a group or the country and there is. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I, I really think that now people will say, but didn't the soul know that? Didn't the choice? 
Right. We, we can only teach I, until you go over there yourself. You're not going right. to. We don't know we all don't the know. answers, call it. We don't. But mm -hmm. it does make sense, and I really believe that other people can knock you off your blueprint, um, and it's up to you to get you know back on it. But I do believe that the war and the Holocaust interfere with many people cause let uh call it so it wasn't a free will i mean did he was he right? born and said yeah. you know what i want to go and be in the holocaust and <laughs> right no i mean i don't know and the same thing with 9 11 call that people say so that soul chose to be in that building at the time and i and another medium mm -hmm. said james said this once he said you have to realize those people that passed in 9 11 took a lot of pain out of the world with them they with made them. the sacrifice and, and you got to go by what you feel in your heart and your soul feels right. And that kind of resonated a little, Colette, you know? Yeah, because right now, I think with the world being in so much turmoil, Oof. I think we the Oof. answers that we're seeking is like, well, like I know somebody said, well, everything happens for a reason. I said, well, no, everything mm. happens for meaning. You know, like that we, it's our job to discover the meaning. Everything happens for meaning, you right. know? So because uh, I don't believe that certain things were meant to be. Exactly. I think they were, we were imposed upon and, right. and then we have to find our way back to healing. And I think that's more the conversation people are having right now. I, um, I, I love that saying. I mean, I, I love that's the saying, everything happens for a reason. I love that saying and I hate that saying. Right. Because how am I going to tell a mother that lost two kids at once yeah. in an accident? That's supposed to happen. They made the choice. And um, they. I, I don't know why something's happened. And sometimes, too, call it a rock is a rock. Sometimes things suck. All right? And right. that happened to yeah. people. With the greatest respect to everyone. Um, sometimes a rock is a rock. You know? And yep. stop trying to make a... A lot of people try to put a metaphysical reasoning for something that, you know, stuff happens sometimes, call it. Right? And I, yeah, and I think the concept of reason is when we, when we anthrop, like the soul, it doesn't operate the same way as the mind. It doesn't operate right. with the need for logic. I don't think spirit is interested in logic. Like in general, the consciousness of spirit, it's, 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 it's not moral. Right? right. And I think the more, if somebody has more of a strength and a, and a, like, which is negative or whatever, and it's, that's the strongest energy, that's mm -hmm. the energy. That's, that's right. what manifests, right? And where you put your attention to. I think that's another concept too, that, you know, when people say, well, how do we control our reality? And you can't control it. You can, you, you can align because everything is possible. You can align yourself with the, with the yeah. experience that you want, but you can't erase what's in front of you. We've talked about this uh, on another uh, show. We talked about the Stockdale paradox, you know, the idea that you have to uh, still feel deep faith and hope in the potential of the optimism that relates not to anything specific. It's just faith that things will change as well as realistically looking at whatever the brutality is in front of you. So both can coexist. Yeah. I believe in God. I believe in the best in humanity. I believe That's that right. we can overcome anything, but right now things suck, right? And there's no reason for certain things. We have yeah. to then discover our way out. So I think that's, that's that kind of, curveball that that we throw into the like because the, there is no certainty that that's that's part of how we just have to show up and see what happens next and yeah with everything that's going on too it's a lot of people when the pandemic started um some people i mean i freaked uh, a lot of people come into <laughs> me can you help us can you come online and i yeah. i for three weeks i couldn't until i heard yep. somebody say on on the um on a newscast a therapist said to the reporter um, the reporter said, is there anything you can do right now to get any advice you can help because we're in unprecedented times. How many times yep. have we hear that? Um, she said, yeah. we're, we're, we're experiencing something that we're not used to. All you can do is know what you can control and what you can't control. Right. When I say that, I can't. I control how I take care of myself, what I yep. get up, the people that I allowed boundaries around me with the yep. subject of this and i can't control what's on the news right now and i yep. you know there are some things you can control and some you and some you can't so but a lot of people it changed a lot of people of this a yeah. lot of people's stuff came up to their face uh, mm -hmm. came up in mm -hmm. their face and they had to work on yep. it yeah working with the soul what mm. are some of the protocols that you might have or teachings that you feel would be really helpful for people right now given that we all have a soul and this really the soul is our primary self would you agree 
Exactly. You are a soul that comes with the body, not a body that comes with the soul. And I tell, I tell my uh, members too, I am soul. I am soul. Mm -hmm. And if you say that when you're frustrated or you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're going out of, um, you're, you're, you're going a little crazy or always, put, <laughs> I always say, I am soul it, is to get centered. It really, really does help. And I really believe that, um, call it a lot of us right now, remember when we were still working, call it during all this too, you kind of felt mm -hmm. guilty. If there was a guilt of like working still or charging or or having people come in um, and some people right now, you're, some people might be extremely happy, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you feel kind of guilty because you have the you got the stuff uh, that's happening in Russia and Ukraine. You got the pandemic. It's OK to feel good. It's OK to feel happy. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's OK to feel it's happy. a natural state of the soul everyone all right do what you can this is like a lot of gabby's work too though do what you can to feel good right now i don't care what it is all right being with yes. your animals going out in nature and if you feel good the person beside you is going to feel good and then yeah if they it's because it's good, contagious it's a ripple effect right now also right so um know that uh it's okay to feel good and you have to remember that every one of us is born with uh it's like a little seed in our soul Right, yeah. it's going to keep growing, and if that's your gift, talent, and ability, do what turns you on, which is what makes you passionate. What are you doing when time flies? What books are you right. reading? And like Colette, you one of the, she's one of the most. I say this all the time. <laughs> it's, she's one of the most well-read of esoteric subjects. She's she reads three in a week or something, and she not goes, did anymore. You read I did, oh but yeah. <laughs> but no, you're so versed, Colette. Yeah, I, you're not just yeah. an oracle or a site. You are you are, are a spiritual teacher with so much philosophy, and you, you you can just spit it out. Um, but if everyone's going through something right now too, though, is you have to pull back every once in a while and yes. know your boundaries of who's who's around you, um, and be kind. Be I kind think that's to, yeah. kind and compassion. And I also want to go back because I it's I think what you said is so important about not feeling guilty for right. doing well or feeling good uh, because it's transient anyway. That's right. And I know it's almost like survivor's guilt, right? Like I know yes. my mom my mom had that after World War II, uh. right? It's like that, that whole idea of I, I lived, they didn't. And so you will find that kind of sense of confusing and conflicting feelings like uh, should I be doing well should I be doing but you know those of us for example are in spiritual service like we right. have to have um, our ability to serve is dependent on us to uh, you know having enough sleep finding joy in things being able to you know find compassion for self and others it's not all about oh you know the world has gone to shit and i better only look at the bad things and and not talk about the good but there's got to be something to hope for we have to find our Absolutely. way back to hope right Absolutely. and i think that's important well anytime too um a lot of people uh, a lot of shitty things have happened to people and they're like well this happened to me and this happened to me yeah are you a victim the student or the master yeah, right a lot of exactly so right now with everything's happening okay how is this what am i learning from this how what kind what am i learning from different people as opposed to look what always happens to me some people wake up as a victim also but if you're a student i think even the worst breakup you had in your life or relationship yeah. can be the best spiritual catalyst for you and the master is someone who knows to, you could look at it and say, um, all right, this is happening again. I'm not going to fall back into that right. mode again. So, yeah. So I, I think it's... And even uh, if you do, you get out faster. I think that's part saying. of what you teach too. So listen, let's pull a card and see what spirit wants us to talk about. If there's anything that we have it that we might have missed. This has been a Which great one of your 50 decks is that? No, 14, 15, <laughs> 14, three more coming. And uh, I'm very excited about my next one. Oh, that's speaking going. of that. Wait, 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 wait. What, what, so what? We're, we're, we're in England. I just did yes. the sacred tour with 30 people, which was amazing from Glastonbury yes. to Cornwall to Tintagel to um, the Glastonbury well, uh, the gardens, I mean, it's to the Chalice, Chalice well. well, everything, St. Michael's Mount. And the people that took us as sacred, uh, sacred tours, um, they were great. The history, they knew the esoteric things. They were guides. They talk about the male and female, the feminine. Uh, we went to tombs. Every place we went, she pulled a card. And what was the deck she pulled it from? I don't know. Wisdom of Avalon. Oh, my God. That's yep, so and I'm, amazing. And I'm looking at the deck, and I'm like, 
<laughs> yep, I'm not surprised. Oh, we that's pulled the so card great. and did a we pulled the Colette Baron Reed Wisdom of Avalon card. One of your first decks, Colette, right? It was my first deck. Us. And it was yeah, and uh it was the first deck that I had made years before that I yeah, it was the blueprint that began all my decks. Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, We're perfect. gonna use the Shaman's Dream. Oh, love it. Um, this is the deck that I did with, with the Alberto latest deck Bilotto. with Alberto Valdo, and it's based on the the shaman archetype. It's got nothing to do with cultural shamanism. It's it's the archetype of the shaman that Jung talked about about right. us all being initiated into the underworld, and we're there to look in the shadows to bring back a gift to our communities. Wow! So let's ask Spirit what would they what Spirit want us to cover as our last subject? Sure. On. Ooh, gathering around the power of community. Wow. All right. Let's talk about your community. Yeah. Let's talk about why you put that together. I know why I put the Oracle Circle membership together. I want to hear about yours. Um, because It gave me the opportunity to teach more of what I studied about the soul. And funny enough, Colette, when it was ready to go, it was in March of 2020. Oh, Just wow. when the pandemic hit. And so, so everybody came. So we waited just a few more. We just waited a little after that, but it was there. It came at the right time, at the right place. And it started off with the Soul Series. Uh, it was 12 lessons recorded on the soul, the aspects of the soul, the gifts of the yep. soul, the soul purpose. And people would go through it month for month. I did it as a program, not knowing, because the community and membership, it's a lot of work. But you have oh, to I know. love oh, it. Yeah. You have you to have love it. You have to love it. it. I love and it. Because it is we're a teaching the work. subject, I mean, it's, and it's not about me. I, there's one lesson on mediumship, and every other month I will do, like you call it, I will do, and you do it twice a month. I do twice it every month. other month, and I have special guests on, um, or I do a coaching call. So it's all about the soul, make, bringing the soul awareness, your purpose, um, your, and sometimes call it too, where you know what this is like. You talked about this too. It's, you know, sometimes when, when you're doing spiritual work, sometimes you're going to touch on some some of those areas that you yep. push away. Oh my God, I don't want to deal with that. And it has to come up to be healed. So there is yeah. some dark night of the soul stuff. So sure. in the community, we talk we talk together. You can see all the faces. There's a sense of community in there, not just the private Facebook page. No, no, also. I get it. But people have a place to go where like-minded people can come together where it's okay to talk about this. And I get to teach them um all about the soul and it's it's i find it fascinating so it's evolving colette it's kind of telling yeah. me where i want to go you i know, same is, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. you know it's interesting because when i first got clean and sober which is 36 and a half years ago wow. um i did not want to join anything. So I joined a 12-step program. It was the only thing that saved my life. Sure. So I learned the own, for me that we need other people in That's order right. to heal. We need the, the sense of community because we do this as a we, not an I. That's right. So I've always believed in the power of community. And it was, like I said, it wasn't something I ever wanted to do. But it, but it saved my life. So I knew that a, it, that especially through the pandemic, a community is so so important. Oh God, but yeah. also, what is the nature of that community? So one of the things that I learned in the twelve step program is that like half my friends didn't even know what I did for a living. Like we came with a common purpose, mm -hmm. which that common purpose, like in my community, we're a spiritual recharging station. We come in there to heal, to love, to laugh, to play, to connect with spirit. You know, to uh, to recalibrate, you know, re-energize and find our map, find That's our right. navigation to our life's purpose, right? So yeah. that I know very clearly in, in the recovery programs, it was all about recovery. It didn't matter what we did. So we could have these incredibly diverse audiences. Like in our cases, you both yours and mine, our communities are ba are, are filled with diversity. And Thank and God. because because we're there for one thing. It's we're not there for everything, right? right. So that's that's what I love about your yeah, and community. And it's not about me or Colette. It's about no. the community, the group. The community. And you, you're starting to see the you're starting to get to know the faces Colette too and then yeah, you got a the lot same of ones. Oh yeah. But oh, it, yeah. it is it is amazing, and you I know you must have gotten uh, testimonies like this. This came at the right time. This saved yep. my life. You don't know what this means to me. So it is it is good feedback. But it's a chance where you can come together in a community of people. Yeah. Uh, you know who they not, would not normally mix, right? These that's are not right. people you would not ne necessarily want to go make friends with everybody because you come from different walks of life, different everything. But the one thing you have in common 
is yeah. something that you know that we bring them together with. John, this has been amazing. Thank you so oh, much. I love it. You can all find information about John Holland on our show notes page. Uh, we you can go to johnholland.com, of course. That's easy mm-hmm. for more information about John and all of his offerings. Uh, find him at johnholland.com. You can also, as I said, click on the show notes link in the description and be whisked to a page just dedicated to this very episode just for John with links to John's website, his phenomenal books, and all the things that he has created. The Psychic Tarot, which is a fantastic, fantastic deck. Still a huge classic. It still sells and all came over the, new with the I mean, they just improved the app too, right? Just like, right. You know. Oh, my God. Yes, right. We, we, we're back on the apps again, you and I, which will be great. Anyway, thank you so much, John, for your time, for your love. We love you. Thank you for your work, Colette, in the Wooniverse. I love you. Thank you so much. So what a great conversation with John Holland, psychic medium John Holland. So what did we learn today about life in general? Well, you know, when I think about the card we pulled, which was called Gathering Around from the Shaman's Dream Oracle, which talks about the power of community. What I didn't say um, when John and I were talking about that card was welcoming in the community of those that have crossed over, that they are there trying to help us all the time. They want us to heal. They want us to forgive. They want the best for us. Those of us who are still living, they have learned lessons and they have so much wisdom to impart to us. So we have to remember it's not just the community of people that are alive, but we also have to remember to include the community of spirit that love us so much. Thank you for listening to our special mini series, I Talk to Dead People on Inside the Wooniverse. Until next time, I'm Colette Baron reed Be well. <laughs>